We haven't talked a lot of Celtics lately. In fact, we've ignored the Celtics, kind of, because <laughs> there was a big story in the New York Post mm -hmm. about the sale and about the gross specs and all of that, and it just went right over our head. It was admittedly on a weekend, I think, is when they launched it, and then there was a Patriots game and sort of just got memory hold, but we will discuss that in about uh, 15 minutes. In the meantime, the big topic today at Media Day that I saw a lot of clips today uh, from Missoula, from uh, Brad Stevens, from Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown and everybody else, uh, repeating, repeating as champions. And I think that's on everyone's mind. I think this is the type of team that even when they weren't winning, people kind of assumed as soon as they did, once they broke the seal, this team had potential to win more than one. Uh, there is uh, teams out there that I think are good. I don't know if there's any team that I'd put uh, neck and neck as uh, player 1 through 12 as good as the Celtics. But they're coming into this season with a major target on their back. Everybody knows that. They're the reigning champs. They brought back everybody. They're spending a ton of money on the roster. And uh, can they repeat? Simple question. Absolutely. I, and I, I think some of the storylines that people have pointed to uh, the off season and the way Jalen Brown was treated and Jason Tatum was treated, and, you know, uh, Barkley. Barkley had a comment when he went off. I think it was like, "Are you that dumb?" The NBA, like you just you just made the defending champs mad. The best team in basketball. You just gave them reason to stay the best team in basketball. Now, who knows where it goes? And I agree with Brad Stevens. Like today's the day where. Everybody, you may not believe you can win the NBA title, but everybody believes you're going to be the best version of whatever the collection of talent you're putting together, right? And right. then tomorrow somebody rolls an ankle, and then, you know, they're sore, and then egos kick in, or for, for them, Porzingis, whatever, that lingered. They, like they're, or Brown and Tatum aren't fitting as well as we think, you know, they didn't put that to bed. Today's the day where everybody believes they're going to be the best. But absolutely. Are, are they not the most talented team in basketball? Like, aren't they the deepest team in – not deepest um, bench, but deepest starting – you know, they want us to believe they're yes. just loaded with all-stars. All five of their starters should be all-stars. They're all locked up. They all have motivation. Like, the whole thing. And their two stars are in their primes. Mm -hmm. So can I flip this around a different way? Sure. What's the biggest question facing this team? Um, I'd say the biggest question would be health. Uh, because despite them being stars in their prime, Jalen Brown's missed a lot of time in the past. Chris Dapps Porzingis is probably going to be mm -hmm. on the shelf again. I mean, I heard uh, Brad Stevens talking about how great his progress is, and you heard Porzingis talking about it too, uh, which we'll play that for you in a second. But I think that, you know, between that and uh, Jason Tatum, who's famously been very durable, eventually guys get hurt. You know, I think it really is just going to come down to that. Uh, that's probably the biggest thing standing in their way. But other than that, I'm not really seeing – too much in the Eastern Conference, if that's what you're asking, in nope. terms of other teams. No, 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 I mean more for them. I for don't necessarily them, yeah. mean... I personally believe it's Jason Tatum's shooting. Health, ego. I think Jason Tatum's shooting tails into ego. Yep. Because he's the guy that's supposed to shoot the most. He's the guy that's supposed to shoot the most with the game on the line. Mm -hmm. And if he's shooting, like, I don't know, 20-something percent from three or just missing shots, then it gets into that weird world of... Well, is he is he the guy? Is he the best player on the team? Or is that really Jalen Brown, as Jason Kidd said, as the awards case from last postseason would say? And you get into that. And I always believe all teams, if you don't know who your starting quarterback is, you're in trouble. If you mm -hmm. don't know who your closer is, you're in trouble. If there, if there isn't a certain uh, defined hierarchy within teams, I think it creates issues through in the locker room, on the court, for the coach, everybody. And if Jason Tatum's shooting, which – was an issue last postseason, which was an issue apparently over the summer, whether on the court in his limited time or off the court in, in whatever they were doing for USA Basketball. If he has, if you have to ask Jason Tatum if he has the shooting yips, then I think that could just fracture this team in weird ways beyond just the missed shots, beyond just the points. It certainly could. Uh, Jason Tatum last year, his field goal percentage was above his career uh, average, and his three-point percentage was just like a tenth above, but it was still above his uh, his career averages. So on the on the season, he wasn't... Did you watch the playoffs? I did watch the playoffs, I'm mm, saying. Not so great, Bob. All year long, he was, he was fine, or he was in line with his Trending. averages, maybe a little bit better than that. And then it fell off at the end, absolutely. And obviously, we all saw what happened in Paris. I think that could certainly be a problem if it's something that continues to plague him all year long. Last year, he got off to a fine start shooting, and the team was better for it, and I don't think it was a huge problem, but it could certainly be one. I mean, listen, I'm not going to downplay that. I think that there's a, a lot of things that could potentially go wrong here. And I also think that, you know, when you talk about 
everybody having a hierarchy and that being established. Like, Shaq and Kobe three-peated before that became a real problem for them, mm-hmm. you know? Like, and even before then, like, you saw you saw that there were struggles. You saw that there was ego clashing. You saw that they weren't really coexisting all that well. They both went off and won championships in other places after that. Like, or not in other places, Kobe won in L.A., but you know what I mean. Like, they won without Separate, each other. Right. And uh, I think that if that's if that's going to be the case here, they have more winning to do before it comes to that boiling point, I think. You know, like, you only, you only won one. There's been a new champion every year for the last six years. Like, you're not... You haven't established yourself in the lore of NBA history yet to start blowing up over hierarchies, I don't think. Well, the the difference I would say between Shaq and Kobe and these guys is that was a clear big man non You know what I mean? True. These guys play the same position. That's it's true, it's yeah. sort of like who's yeah. got the ball, who's shooting. Like there's a little too much replication or overlapping there. Um, and I agree. Like I was one of those people that said, I think they are a multi-title dynasty before they won a single super, uh, title. Like I thought – they were set up for that. I mm-hmm. thought that's the kind of team they were. And their uh, insistence that they've put anything in their relationship to bed and, like, you know, what they're going to say now, like, my guy, you're my guy, you're my guy, we're guys, like, we're the greatest t- teammates ever, that whole thing. Mm-hmm. I'm going to believe that until I have reason not to believe it. Yeah. I'm not saying there's anything there. This is more of an actual tangible um, – it almost be like Amendola and Welker and Brady's throwing to Edelman – uh, and he's dropping it, and it's like, well, why don't you start throwing to somebody else? Right. Well, no, that's my guy. Well, I know he's your guy and was your guy and used to make those catches, but if he's not making the catches now, now it gets weird, and we got to figure out what we're doing on the field. This isn't about friendships or any of that. I'm not even going down the road. J- Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, can they succeed? Absolutely. They won a title. Yeah. That, they shut that up. But the question is, is Jason, because Jason uh, Tatum has addressed the shooting. He's talked about it. He's talked it, about it, yeah. And I don't know if he talked about it today. We'll, we'll try and chase that down. I, yeah. I, that's weird, right? Mm-hmm. In a way, that's like acknowledging the problem. And that, I know, the, is the first step towards fixing it. But the second step towards fixing it is just hitting the shots. Yeah. And just putting us to bed and saying, okay, he's back. Like, he's shooting like normal. That This is not going to continue. Beyond that, I don't – I'm not even worried about the injuries. Because I think, eh, knock on wood – I don't know if they can lose. Actually, I think they could lose one of those guys. I think they can lose one guy and still win the title. Lose Tatum and win the title? Yep. I don't know about that. Hot take. I think that would be. That and would Jalen be... Brown, just because I don't want it painted like I hate Tatum and he's the most overrated player, because I don't love Tatum as much as most people if do. If Brown got injured, I think more people would answer yes, they could win without him. Than, oh, than the MVP Tatum. of the finals and the Eastern Conference finals. Yeah. The most valuable player. Mm-hmm. But if you lose a guy who's not as valuable, you can't win. How that makes sense? Yeah, it was one. It was two. Series. How that makes sense? It was two series. The the two most important series. Who was the better player? We just all talked year. about that's all that matters is Super Bowls and championships and this, those big games. True, but Jason so, Tatum had a better year. I, I didn't say that. I said win a title. Right. This isn't about playing in April. This is about playing in the summer and winning a title. Fine, but in, in I think years they can past, win a title without either of those Jaylen guys. Jalen Brown that's has had bad are. playoff series before, and Jason Tatum sure. has too, and they, they didn't win anything until last year. So, right, when you know. Jalen Brown carried Jason Tatum. You're exactly right. Thanks for making my point. When Jalen Brown took his game to the next level with the season on the line, mm. they won the title. He was when better Jay- than Jason, Jason Tatum. Tatum couldn't shoot, they still won the title because the MVP carried them. Look back at those numbers. Jalen Brown the didn't numbers shoot well are at the all mis- most Jalen misleading. Brown didn't shoot well either. Did you uh, see the numbers for Tatum? The fake points that he piled up at times. Yes. I okay. Did. Okay. And I agree. there was stat stuff. Brown there. was better, but if you look at the actual, I mean, if you look at the shooting percentages, Brown didn't shoot great either. He's the, an all-around those, player. He did. He was better He's than a Tatum. Better all-around player. And they had to pick somebody to be the MVP, but it certainly wasn't because Jalen Brown. Did all that stuff so you, you don't believe said. he was the best player on the Celtics in their championship? No, he was the best player on the Celtics. He was okay. slightly better than Jason Tatum, but he didn't have a great. They, none of the, I didn't think any of them really played that great. Like they were a good team, but individually, I don't think either one of them put up crazy numbers in either the Eastern Conference Finals or in the NBA Finals. Oh, no, that's not true. Brown was good in the Eastern Conference Finals. In the yes. NBA Finals, neither one of them really shot the ball all that well. That's a fact. Right. But that's sort of my point is I think they're a really good basketball team with a lot of depth. Agreed. And if you take they still, any still won the championship in five games. If you take any one of those pieces away, I think they'd still have a shot. And that was also part of the story of last postseason, right? Like they right. benefited from going against teams that lost their key pieces. Now, I think the Celtics are better built to deal with one of those, to deal with one of those that could be a season uh, altering, defining, losing 
like uh, departure from another player. Mm -hmm. And we know that uh, Porzingis is not going to start the year, but Brad Stevens is uh, very encouraged by the progress that he's making. Here's Brad Stevens from earlier today. I'm really encouraged by the health of our team. I mean, we had... um... We had uh, Chris Stapps obviously had the surgery that was well documented after the year and um, seems to be recovering well. He's he's very optimistic. I think uh, I don't know that we're interested in putting a timeline on him because the injury is unique. Good. Um, but as far as how he feels and the progress that he's made, I'd say we're very, very pleased with where he is um, and uh, maybe a little surprised. So that's that's good. They're pleased with where he is. They're a little surprised. Don't want to don't want to slap a timeline on it because you know it's such a unique injury. By the way, Jalen Brown in the uh, in the finals last year shot twenty three percent from three point range. Uh, okay. Tatum shot twenty six percent. So it's not like you know who's what a I shooter. Mean? What? Who's the shooter? Neither one of them were the shooter. No, no, no. Who's thing. the shooter though? Who do you expect to be the shooter? I expect Tatum to be better okay. than Brown, which he was. Okay. But Brown was very bad. I mean, twenty three percent is very poor. But, but okay. Don't we agree I, that Jalen Brown's that he was game? Better. I no, no, no. Jalen Brown's game is not built too. just on shooting threes. Right, right. But neither is Jason Tatum. Is, he plays defense. He shoots a mid-range jumper, which I actually think he should shoot more. Even though the analytics people tell me I'm a moron, because I think that's a strength of his game. Mm-hmm. I think he's one of the best in the league at that. He's pretty good at that. Yeah, that elbow jumper. Sure. Like he's an all-around basketball player. But the guy who's supposed to hit the three to end the game is who? Uh, it's supposed to be Jason Tatum. I'd say okay. that became Jalen Brown, but then in the finals, neither one of them get it a three. So right, the and they still won. They still did win. So they're yes. really good. Uh, yes, they what are. What are we arguing? It's not 5 o'clock yet. We don't have stupid arguments until the 5 o'clock hour. Really- and yes to the 7, uh, whatever the numb. Did, uh, did you watch the playoffs, Andy? Anytime you bring up that Jason Tatum might not be the greatest basketball player in the history of the world. He shot under 40% from the field in the finals. And I think his numbers it's are actually yeah. better than his performance. I don't just read the stat okay. line. I think his numbers are better than his performance. I watched every minute of every game. You know why I do that? Because I am a bit of a critic of his. And when I have these arguments, I want to be relatively well informed. I want to be an informed hater. Is what exactly. I want to be. Exactly. Very good. 617-779-7937 is the phone number. The Celtics had a very, very weird offseason. Uh, starting with the parade, and then it went uh, kind of downhill from there in a lot of different ways. They didn't have a lot of time to enjoy uh, and uh, bask in the glow of their championship. This was all documented today.